Hey gang, Scott here. So uh, I got this like nifty little trick feature of the masking panel in Lightroom I want to share with you. I actually touched on this uh, a, a, a bunch of videos ago and I was talking about the intersection uh, aspect of Lightroom masks. And I found this, this to be useful again when I was doing brushing, you know, doing ads and subtracts. And it's how you can reorder your uh, different components of a mask. And the best way for me to explain this is just to show you how it works. So uh, let's dive in. I'm working on this photo and you can have some masks here. You can see I've backtracked a little bit in my stack. But it's mask number two that I want to show you. A quick before and after. This is just, you know, darkening the foreground. So attention will be drawn more to, you know, the rock. That was my subject really. But as I open up this mask, you'll see a couple of things here. And the way that masks are built up in Lightroom is, you know, you, you start with something. I started with an object. And then as you add more masks, they build upward. Uh, you'll notice that brush one and two are actually in numerical order. And that's, you know, for the discerning eye, very interesting because normally it'd be brush one and then brush two, and I reversed the order. And uh, the reason, I'll just, it's, again, it's going to be easiest for me to show you how this worked. So let's repeat what I was doing here. I'll create a new mask, and I started with doing an object selection. Grab the box, and I kind of just said, you know, uh, give me the foreground. And I'm going to hope that it repeats what it did last time. Yes. I didn't notice that it missed this bit in the corner. And so I was like, okay, well, this isn't so bad. Uh, I need to brush away some of this other stuff that's here. So, you know, great, I have this, uh, this selection. Let me subtract from it. Grab the brush. Set the auto mask. You know, kind of did, did my work through here. And I'll do this a little bit quickly and sloppy just so that you get the idea. So I've done, like, you know, this kind of stuff. You know, sloppy work, but we're just going to use this for illustrative purposes. And then I realized, oh, wait, um, I've got more here that I need to add in. I missed this bit. Great. What do I do? Add another brush, right? This time I'm painting in. Um, auto mask is probably fine. I'll just kind of kind of brush through here. And when I did that, I kind of went a little bit too far. Like, oops. I need to subtract things. Here's where I have the choice. I could add yet another subtract brush, right? Come up here. Or I already have this subtract brush, right? I've already subtracted a whole lot of this. I just want to subtract a little bit more. So I'd pick that brush, you know, and start clicking around. I'm clicking, I'm clicking, I'm clicking. And nothing's happening. Maybe this is not like the, the this is a quirk uh, where I'm looking at like uh, somewhere in between my selection, but it's not showing it to me because of something else. Well, if I grab this brush and I say, this is the subtraction. This is me taking things away. I want that at the top. You'll notice my mask changed because now I'm actually able to see those brush strokes because I couldn't subtract. It's interesting. It's like really like mind bending. I couldn't subtract from a thing that this subtraction didn't know about yet, right? This is, this is back in history before I added more things. Well, I can just have my single subtraction brush at the very top and go ahead and take care of my cleanup. And I find that this reordering of brushes, or not even brushes, just of things in your mask, have uh, other uses as well. I found it useful for adding and subtracting where I've built up a selection and I need to subtract things. You know, the final touches, make that subtraction, make sure it's on the top. And if you miss something, and you have to go back and change your selection for some reason. If you have one of those subtract brushes, put it at the top so you can take everything else away from your, your total mask. It's also very helpful for intersections, where you're wanting to do intersections between different things, and you want to have an intersection of like a, several portions of a mask, putting the intersection at the very top. That was where I touched on it in a previous video, and I'll put a link in the show notes to that one. Uh, but that's the uh, that's like the, the the cool little trick you can do with the masking panel in Lightroom. Change the order in which the uh, the various components of your selection are built up. Hope you found it useful. Questions? Drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport.